<laughs> oh god. Let's uh let's get this show on the road. Hello everybody. It's Chapo. This week we got full house. Let's sound off. Me, Will Meneker. Amberly Frost reclining. Hey everyone, it's Virgil. Oh, I'm John Kerry and I'm reporting for duty. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Christman, ladies and gentlemen. And joining us, uh, sitting in this week, is our friend Alex Nichols, also known as Lowenoption on Twitter. Alex, how's it going, buddy? Good. What's up, guys? We're, uh, we're doing great. We're feeling great. Yeah. Um, I haven't read the news or anything, but I just, um, you know, uh, going to Vegas soon, so I laid down a prop bet that Bill Maher will never say the N word on TV. <laughs> I bet. I bet Read actually the damn news. I bet twelve months of Patreon. But uh, is there, oh, has God. anything happened since? Let the, me just take a big sip of coffee yeah. and check the uh, headlines. <laughs> I'm a little shocked that Bill Maher hasn't said the N word way before now. I mean, he has to have, right? Probably. I mean, yeah. like, yeah, in public. I yeah, s- in public. Yeah. 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 No, I I mean on the air. Yeah. He said it on politically incorrect. Really? Yeah. All right. I I mean different times. I, yeah, <laughs> it's not I did see uh I saw a really good really good tweet from a friend of the show Charles Clymer <laughs> and he was like it is one of those like pandering ones it's like white people there's no situation in which you need to say the n word and I'm like Who's arguing that you need to say it? Like, yeah. it's a medical emergency. Uh, 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 well, actually, uh, when I'm giving a reading from Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn, <laughs> it is appropriate. If you have a heart attack, you're supposed to say it twice <laughs> because it keeps your adrenaline going. <laughs> it's me arguing with Charles It's Palmer. an emergency situation, yeah. Call me then one more time and I'll sock you in the face, you goddamn queer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, the, we, we wanted to have Alex on because uh, Alex is a... Uh, you know, uh, just wrote a couple weeks ago a piece for uh, the outline that, uh, as soon as I read it, I knew we uh, had to had to get him on to talk about because this was just pure catnip for your boy Will Meneker. Because what Alex has done is a guide to conservative publications. You've done essentially a ranking of the best of the sort of online right news outlets and uh, and pages. And like th- these are all my favorites, you know. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to go through each one of them. Maybe the listeners aren't quite as sadomasochistic as I am, so they're not as familiar with each one of these ad websites as I am. But Alex, you have done the hard work of ranking and ordering all of the best of the best. I sure have. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, you you rate them on? Uh, could you could you explain the sort of scale that that you rated these websites on? I basically rated them on uh, how insufferable they are. <laughs> that is rather the- rather than like a, a strict left to right scale, which is hard to determine because, especially uh, in the in the Trump era, it's sort of gotten muddled because yeah. the fascists sort of borrow bits and pieces from the left, like Breitbart. They they pretend to be anti trade. Um, and all, all those well, kind of things. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, the point you make is that, like, if you look at a website like Breitbart, they're to the right of the National Review on things like race and immigration, but they seem to flank them from the left on things like trade and, and certain, like, economic, uh, sort of economic populism. And so, gamer gamer rights. Yeah, and gamer <laughs> rights. Um, That's the but, most important issue. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I think you, you get it exactly right. Uh, you're right here that uh, you have to rank them by demeanor. How thoroughly do they embody the worst characteristics of conservative writing? How smug are they? How convinced are they of their own superior intellect? Are they painfully, seethingly horny? <laughs> <laughs> A.K.A. the walking I mean, stick scale. That has to be all of them, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I, Who's I, not I, horny on the right host? <laughs> All Alex, of them are excreting something from their pores. For some of them, it's sweat. For some of them, it's cum. <laughs> and again, you, you get it exactly right. Like This is the only way that these, these people and their writing can actually really be considered. They, they, they have to be judged on their kind of self-presentation rather than their politics. And again, just how unbearably horny they are. Like, and just how much that seeps through in every every word that they pound out on a, on a laptop. Yeah. They're how, so horny. How many bears of men are on the masthead? <laughs> so, uh, 
You say, uh, as many of the worst specimens delight in terrifying the world with poor grooming decisions, our measuring stick will be the goatee. Here affixed to a tiny troll face. <laughs> the longer the goatee, the more batshit insane the publication. <laughs> so uh, let's just begin now. Uh, let's go through each one of these. Um, and you start with uh, Breitbart, the big B. Hell yeah. The B boys. The Don uh, Cape de Tutti Capo, <laughs> as they say in the mafia. Uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, Steve Bannon was, you know, took over. Now he's in the White House. But uh, you're right here of Breitbart. Uh, following in the footsteps of founder Andrew Breitbart, whose 2012 death from a heart attack at 43 may or may not have been related to using the internet too much. <laughs> <laughs> the current staff keeps it cranked to 11 at all times. Every headline is in all caps, and most are devoted to defending Trump's honor against anti-Trump hysteria from the fake news. The rest are all about migrant rape crisis, illegal immigrants, or black shoplifters. <laughs> so, Alex, like... Uh, that's a pretty good uh, summary of what's on Breitbart, but like, how would you describe the sort of Breitbart house style? It's basically, um, it's exactly what your racist uncle wants to read. It's just like divorced guys who are like 55 to 65. They have high blood pressure. They take Viagra, but it doesn't work. <laughs> and they, uh, they just want to get angry. They just have an endorphin rush from being as angry as possible. So they log on. They get the all caps headlines. They get um, <laughs> it, it's actually become slightly less racist. Interestingly enough, um, now that Steve Bannon is absent, they used to have a black crime tag, Ugh. which they don't oh, they don't Jesus. use anymore. Um, and I'm looking at it right now, and they've got a the Bill Maher headline, and they actually star out that famous word we all know and love. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> yeah, they're, looks, like so they're, they're, they're doing, learning and growing doing better. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, sorry, this is—I'm not officially on this episode, but I'm popping in. It's Brendan. Um, that when Ben Shapiro famously left the publication because it had betrayed the founder Andrew's wishes, it also became less racist, despite the fact that he's now the good one who got out. He used to write screeds about Palestinians black people, mm. black culture in general. And so despite him being sort of this, uh, this signifier of a sea change where things got worse, in some cases, uh, Ben was one of the most, you know, despicable and racist of any of he them. Took, he took that, uh, that talent to fiction. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a searing indictment of the, uh, the, the police brutality racket in America's inner cities. <laughs> The Homer Simpson shirt wearing, uh, <laughs> the Homer race Simpson. baiting thugs. Uh, uh, what Homer if Simpson shirt wearing <laughs> poverty pimps. <laughs> <laughs> they love Homer. What if he keeps retiring f to like more and more ridiculous creative pursuits? Like he's like, okay, now I'm leaving behind fiction to pursue dance. He could be a very good vaudeville dummy to somebody else. He <laughs> looks like one of those yeah, puppets. He, 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 does a, he does a vaudeville act where the bomb blows up in blackface every time, that old gag. And I mean, he's so like, oh, look these... at me now. I'm going to use racial grievances. So many of these little fascists are just failed artists anyway. I'm waiting for the one-man show. Now, uh, I think for each one of these, I'm going to go to the, the website, just like in, as, as you guys said, and just scroll through. And uh, one of the first things I noticed that's on Breitbart right now is that like, it still is uh, just sort of... Um, running flack for Steve Bannon now that he's in the White House. And like two of the top news items are meltdown in red, globalists revive President Bannon taunt post Paris pullout. And then right underneath it, New York Times, Trump climate decision, a victory for Steve Bannon. Yeah, Folks, I know it looked like Steve Bannon was out of commission for a while, but he was just molting. <laughs> he burst forth out of his glistening carapace and is ready to make America great again. <laughs> Meltdown. Steve Bannon is literally melting. <laughs> Steve, ba Steve Bannon triggers Kushner wing by shedding skin and laying eggs in the Lincoln bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, Steve Steve Bannon is creating a black mold in the Resolute desk. 
everyone's complaining, but they weren't complaining when Bill Clinton was getting blowjobs in there, triggered. <laughs> and now for each one of these, uh, Alex, you, you also do, uh, like, uh, underneath your little description, you have a uh, worst current headline, and the one you have for Breitbart <laughs> is five unanswered questions about ABC's cancellation of Last Man Standing. <laughs> <laughs> They're very, very mad about that. They're well, very mad that... Um, that Tim Allen is no longer on the air doing uh, doing his uh, extremely racist version of Tim Taylor. <laughs> I've seen that show. It's insane. Really? What, yeah, it's nuts. yeah, Nick. What is the show? Went through it. Oh my god. It's ba- yeah, it's basically he's uh, it's home improvement, but instead of all sons, it's all daughters, and he wants to fuck the daughters, <laughs> and he's angry at the daughters' boyfriends because they don't uh, they're not traditionally masculine enough. <laughs> Like him, who uh, <laughs> vlogs for a living, I guess. No, 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 no. This is the best part. He runs a um, like an outdoorsman shop with like oh, camping okay. gear and stuff. But it appears that the majority of his job there is vlogging on their behalf. He's 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 a YouTube guy. He's a YouTube guy. He's he's whatever Sargon of a cod, <laughs> but like a dad. <laughs> It's amazing. He's a daddy blogger. He's a daddy <laughs> vlogger. That's going to be the new thing. Like, now that coal's going away, the new coal miners are like PewDiePie, Sargon of Akkad. <laughs> instead, of, uh, instead of black lung, you get vape lung. <laughs> I just like that in Home Improvement, they wanted him to have a blue-collar coated job, but they wanted him to have a big, nice house. So they're like, well, he does tools, but on television. Now it's like they're not even bothering with that patina of it. It's just he yells on the internet. That is now the most masculine alpha thing. That's you a can really do. fascinating phenomenon to me. The fact that in almost every sitcom you have this like blue collar coded guy, but it, it it the shows never want to confront the actual material reality of being a blue collar worker. And it, you see it everywhere. You see it with like with Homer Simpson to bring Homer Simpson back up. Well, they don't want to have whole episodes where they're like trying to pay their, for their fucking medical insurance or something. That was it worked for Roseanne, but that's uh, the only really real one. Yeah, yeah, that's the then only. She real got one. prodromal schizophrenia <laughs> and blocked me on well, Twitter. The, a, <laughs> how dare she? I have to say, I'm pissed that they canceled Last Man Standing too because I've been told that they were gonna end the season the whole series in a couple seasons with a twist ending where you found out that the guy is actually supposed to be Chris Benoit. (laughs) (laughs) So they're still mad about this fucking... About this fucking show that was on ABC on Friday night, like there's some conspiracy. Nobody's heard of this. Nobody... Well, you haven't heard of it because you're in a bubble. Yeah. But nobody... I'm saying nobody was organizing against this show and complaining. Everyone everyone around the water cooler... Yeah, it was like number 51 on the, on the, the top show charts. It was just barely hanging on the whole time. No, nah, dude, it was a hit. Everyone at the water cooler at, you know, the good old-fashioned blue-collar jobs, you know, like the no, all no, the blue-collar no. stores, they it would all like, talk about the show. It was like the Velvet Underground. Like, okay, <laughs> not a lot of people watched it, but everyone that did started their own conservative vlogging channel. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was like Lady Ghostbusters, but for, like, uh, for chuds. And they were like, look... I know it didn't do great. I know it's not perfect, but it was just something nice for us. <laughs> well, I mean, everyone, everyone on my free Daniel Holesclaw forum loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, uh, we mentioned uh, our, our our beautiful boy Ben Shapiro a second ago. the uh, The second website on our uh, tour of Hades is the Daily Wire, and this is uh, Ben Shapiro's little vanity project. And I just want to read here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the website myself, but you write, upon opening the website, a splash screen demands that you read Shapiro's free ebook titled Five Lies Colleges Tell Your Kids. The anti-college beat has been his shtick for 13 years. While a student at UCLA, he built a media brand around remaining a proud virgin in the face of widespread liberal indoctrination and sexual <laughs> debauchery. Now a decade out of college, the sources of Shapiro's emotional angst have broadened somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The phrase "proud virgin" is so good. That was the original. That proud was the original boy. name for proud boys. And and lo and behold, I know Brendan. You just said we've been talking about this for the last 20 minutes. But one of the top things that you <laughs> on the Daily Wire right now is uh, again still angry that Last Man Standing was canceled. <laughs> Alex, I, I just opened the Daily Wire website, and of course, I was immediately hit with 
get this ebook free. And it's just uh, the the photo of the this cover is like Ben's eyes and then five lies written over his little boyish mouth. Yeah, his that's Ben's piercing sta- sexual eyes. That's Ben standing on the toilet. <laughs> peer over, peer over the, peer over the trench and see if any sicko trench raiders have entered the bathroom. It says, in addition to an ad-free experience, gain access to our ebook library as a basic subscriber. Try it now. No credit card required. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, just last but not least, in the daily, the Daily Wire. Uh, what a fucking awful name, too. The Daily Wire. You have under worst current headline. James Woods destroys Planned Parenthood President Cecile Richards in single tweet. <laughs> Friend of the show. So th- that's Ben's startup, and the, the, the model is a subscription model for incredibly old people who are mad that young people are having sex and going to college and things like that. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. The people who want to read that don't know what an ebook is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine that like ninety percent of uh, Daily Water, Wire's help or support email is just people like I subscribed. I checked my mail. My ebook hasn't come. <laughs> Are you cheating me? I knew not to trust you. All those articles on that website just get printed out by grandpa- grandchildren <laughs> and given to the grandparents. Uh, moving on, uh, we, we come now to uh, the Daily Caller. Uh, and I think the interesting thing about the Daily Caller that uh, that you note is that, th- unlike the, a lot of the other ones, this one's a little harder to pin down. The Daily Caller is more of a sort Broad. of a... Pen- 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 uh, They're sorry. called women, Felix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's for news holes. <laughs> like, they... <laughs> I like the Daily Caller because, you know, it's a generic website name, but it also describes why every staff writer has a restraining order. <laughs> <laughs> they were a Daily Caller against every woman. But the Daily Caller has less of, like, a, a distinct editorial bent in that they, they sort of uh, are a halfway home for, you know, like the whole, you know, spectrum of conservative weirdos, you know, from the pro to anti-Trump and uh, nothing in between because yeah. that's all they are. It doesn't matter if you support Trump, you support globalists, you support Bill Crystal, whatever. But as long as you, uh, you were taken aside by school administration because you were leering at women in a philosophy class and people kept tripping over your unnecessary walking stick... You're at home at the Daily Caller. (laughs) The last time I went to the Daily Caller, I swear to God, every single article on the trending sidebar was a mugshot of a high school or middle school teacher caught having sex with a male student. (laughs) Every single one. This is the horniest of horny dad conservative websites. Uh, Well, they're all weirdo trad cats. A lot of them are. They're all bumbling around the office dressed like G.K. Chesterton with assless chaps. <laughs> <laughs> they they actually they have the uh, most workman's comp paid out to any media website because they get their uh, they get their Opus Dei tassels and necklaces caught in gyro machines. <laughs> <laughs> I've been attacked spinning. by the Turk once again. <laughs> <laughs> spinning, spinning, spinning like a whirling dervish of traditionalism. Uh, Alex, you're right here. Uh, of course, uh, it was founded by uh, Tucker Carlson, uh, you know, the bow-tied asshole who's now taken over for uh, Bill O'Reilly. Uh, but uh, you're right here. Carlson said he intended the Daily Caller as, quote, a conservative news site in the mold of the liberal Huffington Post, but with more firearms coverage and fewer nipple slip sideshows. And he said, you go on to say, that's strange since the front page is full of garbage like Jennifer Lawrence not apologizing for leaked pole dancing video. <laughs> and <laughs> Elise Lobb's skirt is losing the battle with the wind in this video. <laughs> And virtually, you said they had a sidebar just about horny teachers sleeping with teenage male yeah, students. Yeah, I, I, and I remember, you know, after a couple of years, the Daily Caller went out and they got some money and they tried to hire legitimate journalists and they like would break stories and stuff. But still, no one was reading the fucking stories. Imagine laboring as yeah. a journalist <laughs> in DC for the Daily Caller, and you're getting a thousand hits on your scoop about uh, fucking Obamacare or whatever, and everyone is just reading. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she's she's hot. Yeah, she shouldn't have done that. <laughs> And uh, and then sort of like uh, to, to your ranking system, you, you rank each of these sites based on their goatee versus anti-goatee qualities. And of course, the Daily Caller in the goatee column, uh, you have founder used to wear bow ties. And, but in the anti-goatee column, you have openly horny for Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> um, this may shed a little bit of light on the goatee factor is when I was still a media reporter. One time I wrote a story about how the Daily Caller published an article that was obviously garbage in some way, shape, or form about, um, I don't know, liberals being secular and stuff like that. 
but the the headline that this like retired colonel was trying to make pop said or contained the phrase "kill all the Jews." He was like, <laughs> he's trying to be clever, being like, "kill all the Jews," and then like they'll come for you or something. But it didn't it didn't scan, and so there was this big everyone was screenshotting and passing it around like, "What the fuck is this?" And so I I got on the phone with Tucker Carlson, and I was like, "Hey, what's up with your kill all the Jews um, scoop today?" And he was like very flustered and we were they were taking it down and um after the dust had settled he was like oh it's, it's no big deal it's just some editor was probably drunk it wasn't a big deal you know we're all kind of you know it's we're all tired in the morning i was like okay did you get any um and just as like a cursory question i said did you get any complaints about it? And he goes no we didn't get any complaints from readers <laughs> <laughs> nailed it i'm not surprised that uh editors being drunk while publishing articles <laughs> is a common thing based on the interactions i've had with daily caller people on twitter yeah, they all seem like they're in a bender, and they have that. They have that. That's you know the only one of the only real horseshoe theory things is that uh, DC liberals and conservatives think that like binge drinking and funk, ba- vaguely functional alcoholism is cool. It's manly. Just it, it's manly, classy. It's you have to be a classy gent. That's why you can only jack off to uh, videos of uh, women in a in a poodle skirt standing. <laughs> over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone. Uh, all of them like just all of them are just like fucking have walk around with whiskey dick all day and they're like, Yeah, I'm like Bukowski. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what no, you're just you're just getting drunk and being like, Rihanna has to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well the the last thing I want to bring up for the Daily Caller is uh they, they wanted to, as you said, uh, distance themselves from the uh, trash that's on the Huffington Post. Uh, but they also have a, a section, a feature called the Daily Vapor. And uh, I just want to <laughs> open this up right now. They do uh, uh, like vape, vape reviews. And I just want to play for uh, the, the, everyone in the room here. <laughs> M- Mikey Vapes. I want to I play just a little snatch of Mikey Vapes, who's reviewing the Pioneer 4U's IP4, IPV400 vape. So let's just uh, check out uh, a, a quick snatch of Mike Vapes. What's up, peeps? Mike Vapes here. <laughs> Today I have a new device to show you guys. And this device right here was sent to me for the purpose of this review from elementvape.com. It is the new IPV400, and no, not 400 watts. It's just called the IPV400. <laughs> oh, thank you. Made by Pioneer for you. This is a 200 watt device. It takes two 18650 ran in series and no batteries are not included. Okay, this video is 12 minutes. <laughs> just, for, for the listeners, uh, there's a guy who looks to be about 50 years old wearing sort of one of those like stunted baseball caps in a, in a bedroom that contains three visible Scarface posters. How the fuck did they not call it, hey, I'm vaping it! <laughs> uh, you know, it, there's actually going to be a huge scandal when they find out uh, he's actually Mike Vapenstein. <laughs> right there, that is the most well-adjusted person working for the Daily Call. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's making eye contact with me. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have an ankle monitor on. I don't see any, like, it doesn't appear to be in a group home. Uh <laughs> Another worst current headline for the Daily Caller, my favorite that you have is Sanctuary City Mayor Trashes American Hero Robert E. Lee. <laughs> 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 Next up on the roster, we have Heat Street. Uh, now, tell me about the SJWs, George. <laughs> Heat Street is sort of a new one. I'm not as familiar with it as the other ones, but it was founded it's by the Louise best. Mensch. And as you mentioned, that's actually the least objectionable thing about Heat Street. You write here, uh, Heat Street, it, it sort of, uh, how would you do it? It sort of aims at a younger audience, right, Alex? Yeah, it's, it, it's for guys who, um, let's see what I said. The ideal reader is male, inexplicably moist looking, and furious <laughs> that social justice warriors <laughs> took over his favorite video game for him. I, that line inexplicably moist looking is so fucking perfect. Because yeah. like, I think it, it, it sums these people up. So perfectly. They're all so moist. Yeah, they all look like they just slept under a porch on a rainy day <laughs> and just had to roll into the office and be like, ah, why Ubisoft wants to kill white people. <laughs> but like this is all like like video game shit. This is clearly like the the weird mutation of like like Gamergate the news outlet, right? Yeah, it, it's sort of like Breitbart. It's sort of like what Milo did for Breitbart, but it's all that. It doesn't have any, uh, you know, black shoplifters or whatever. 
So it's just like right right to the vein of uh, Lena Dunham said this. If you open it up right now, first thing is Lena Dunham, <laughs> who is uh, no longer has a TV show and is not currently doing anything, but they are still laser focused on Lena Dunham. <laughs> it's like it's it's just pure culture war shit. So it's like um, we found this thing in a uh, gender studies uh, journal that has four subscribers. Uh, people on Twitter said this triggered libs in Facebook comment threads. Black Lives Matter thugs in GTA Online walk around saying hands up, don't shoot at airport in game. <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest story. I was uh, in that protest. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at their their their. <laughs> I'm looking at their Twitter right now, and there's just one headline that just says "Never give in to snowflakes." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Virgil, uh, I remember you had an interaction with Heat Street back uh, during yeah. the, the Garf controversy. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the soggy boys wanted to do an article <laughs> about it. These are all like message board posters who are tryhards. Like, I they're probably going to write about this segment, which is fucking awful. Uh, I'm told they yeah, have you can, no. You can explicitly bait them. There was someone who said, uh, like last week, I think they they said something, and then at the bottom of the tweet, they said. Uh, Heat Street, please write about this. And then a guy put it on Heat Street. He embedded the tweet it was and Brian got Feldman. mad about it anyway. Yeah, these guys, they don't... It's ostensibly conservative, but none of these individuals have any kind of political values. They're just sort of what I like to call train obsessives on the internet. Right. I, I mean, I think that, like, gaming became a political spectrum in 2014, but these people are still mad about it, and so you have the gamer spectrum where... You know, on the far right, you have these guys who, like, scream at any game that has, like, white enemies that you shoot. <laughs> and then on the left, you have uh, people who pretend to make video games. And, uh, like, you know, I don't, I don't know what they're mad about. But I would say Virgil and I, we're kind of like the no labels of gamers. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We absolutely are. <laughs> Radical the, centrists. There's yeah. this one guy who, from there who's, like, he was, uh, he was like a Nazi on the internet. And, and, and then he became a... Uh, anti Gamergate guy, and then he just kept getting made fun of. And so he became a Ian pro Miles Gamergate. He's M Ian Miles? Yeah, he's the soggy guy who's like the mirror image of Arthur Chu, <laughs> and because they both have an ant problem. <laughs> <laughs> he is so moist. He supported Trump because uh, because of Drain the Swamp. <laughs> <laughs> With, uh, Drain the cyst. <laughs> <laughs> Out in a minute. <laughs> but first of all, I remember uh, uh, the, the Heat Street guys, they, they reached out to you for comment about your, your Garfield gender thing. Yeah. And your response to them was great. I think it was just basically you said like... It was uh, like, go fuck yourself in your libertarian website. <laughs> yeah, like, and then they printed that. There were... <laughs> yeah, and this like really excruciating article. These guys can really kill a joke. Oh man, safe space libs are triggered by based Jim Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Garfield's too transgressive. Next up on the roster here, this is sort of the surprising one. You have the New York Times, which you know I thought what? I thought that was the the height of the liberal media. But, of course, they absolutely deserve uh, a spot on this roster because you mentioned they're basically, like an, as we've discussed in the past in the show, they're god-awful uh, op-ed page. Yeah, I, anytime you're talking about goatees, you have to mention Ross Douthat. And I, I don't know if he really has a goatee. I was going to use him as the image for the goatee <laughs> ranking. But if you look a little closer on his picture, he's got one of those beards where it looks like a goatee. And then you zoom in, and then there's just a little bit of scruff under the chin. <laughs> it's it's very uh, it's a sort of trickery. Yeah, that's <laughs> called, that's called the uh, grassy knoll. You right here. Uh, you talk about uh, Thomas Friedman, uh, who has a resume of needless world tours and severe head injuries that rivals only Keith Richards. <laughs> and then you said David Brooks is Thomas Friedman without the mustache and one third fewer brain lesions. Nick Kristoff <laughs> rescues sex trafficked children and then fights for their right to work in a sweatshop. <laughs> Ross doubt that is a closet Francoist whose sole purpose in life is to rid the world of birth control pills. And then, of course, you talk about the latest hire, Brett Stevens. But I think your line about uh, Ross is exactly right, that he's a closet Francoist. And I think that like that th Francoist is the best way to describe the sort of uh, Catholic right in America. It's just that to varying degrees, they're out with it. But if really pressed, Ross would much prefer to live in Franco Spain than contemporary America. Absolutely. Yeah. He loves the tapas, for one. 
we talked a lot about the New York Times, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip ahead now to uh, the American Conservative. The next one. Now, the American Conservative is sort of interesting because I actually think their coverage of foreign policy is quite good. Yeah, pretty good. Like uh, our friend uh, Chase Madar is actually. Uh, uh, an editor there, or he's like on the masthead, yeah. and uh, like uh, Kelly Vlahos, I think does really good reporting for yeah. them. But it's sort of like the old phrase about how politics ends at the water's edge. I sort of feel the same way about uh, American conservative in that, like, yeah, I only because pay I attention. mean they're good for now, but just wait until uh, Syria announces that they're going to have a gender neutral bathroom, <laughs> and then all of a sudden that's going to go out the window. And uh, Alex, you describe this dynamic uh, again wonderfully, where you say. Uh, however, the energy not spent calling for nuclear strikes on Iran is instead devoted to berating a fallen society for rejecting traditional Catholic values. These include fanatical homophobia, strict gender segregation of public restrooms, and soul-destroying self-hatred. Many of the most popular articles are by Rod Dreher, a fascinating specimen who was raised Methodist <laughs> and converted to Catholicism in 1993. This in and of itself is indicative of a personality disorder, but he one-upped himself by becoming Coming Eastern Orthodox in 20, 2006. And then you have an unbelievable quote from one of Rod's uh, most latest articles where he writes, we are dead men. We have poisoned ourselves. We are a depraved civilization that deserves judgment and we are going to get it. And then you said, if that doesn't float your boat, they also have articles about how liberals are too self-righteous. <laughs> 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 but goddamn, Rod is on a kick and I want to do... Uh, just a brief digression just to check in on Rod because he did have an article last week uh, titled Black Like Me? Question mark. Look at his wow. face. <laughs> Look at his face here. I, I can't describe this to the listeners, but we'll, we can link to the article. And then under his ridiculous, like, pseudo hipster face, it says, this guy is descended from a slave. No, really. And the entire purpose of this article is that Rod did 23 and Me, and when he got his profile back, it turned out that he's like point oh 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 one percent West African uh, descended. Yeah, uh, his that doesn't necessarily mean that he's descended from a slave either. No, it does because they actually did genealogy research, and his great 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 grandfather wrote the uh, Slave Chronicle, Uncle Tom's Bathroom, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I like your uh, one line here about the Amer American conservative where it says, uh, against foreign intervention, except for the Crusades. <laughs> I just want to point out in this one, um, I think this is the first published instance of the phrase honk off. <laughs> I, th I believe I'm the first person to say that in a published article. Moving on from a, a conservative outlet that is anti-intervention to one that is probably the most pro-intervention, the Weekly Standard. Oh, boy. You write uh, the open up that website. Yeah, the Weekly Standard is a time machine. It both looks and reads like a website from 2006. The layout itself is unnerving, possibly because it recalls the heyday of Internet Explorer six when websites were allowed to format your hard drive through JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, open it up, refresh it a few times. You will see every element on the page move around. Five, six, six. <laughs> I'm opening up They've right got now. Got a dancing hamster on there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little counter. You're the one millionth person to visit. But this is, of course, Bill Crystal's uh, vanity project, um, and like they, it basically exists to. Uh, start the next war uh they you know they existed this was like the 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 brain bug that gave us the iraq war and they're working overtime to start one with iran even though that you know like that's why they exist is to start wars in foreign countries yeah. that's why bill crystal gets out of bed every day every like every publication we listed before that like they're all terrible people but i would argue that no one has as many bodies on their hands as the weekly standard yeah, they definitely have quite a body count. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what they <side>. should, yeah. <laughs> oh. What is that pop-up ad? Okay, the, the pop-up ad on the weekly <laughs> standard right now is the Standard Summit 2017 at the Broadmoor Resort featuring Charles Krauthammer, Fred Barnes, Bill Crystal, and Stephen Hayes. Oh and it has God, each one of their photos, and it looks like um, at the, 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 one of the top stories at the weekly standard right now is the unintentional politics of Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> now, Alex, yeah, the, they're like Weekly Standard. Their cultural shit. It's like uh, Richard Ramirez listening to Black Sabbath records backwards and thinking he's telling him to kill women. But instead, they watch like Marvel movies and they're like, oh, what? Do you're telling me we have to drop a nuke on Beirut? That's. I mean, th- that's they got that from the libs, though. It was yeah. a practice called reading resistance, and they would you know read resistance into Beyonce. Is a the theorist Catherine Liu. Um, likes to quote this Freud bit that says uh, the similarity between the philosopher and uh, and the schizophrenic is that they both believe the text is a secret conspiracy. <laughs> That's why you should never read. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just perusing their website right now, uh, one of their griffs is get a free American flag lapel pin when you subscribe to the Weekly Standard. Oh, man, those are yeah, so expensive. It's, it's, like a, it's like a time machine. It's <laughs> like 2004 um, American flag lapel pins. See, that's... It's, a- like, it's, like, a, it's like selling a American flag pogs. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so outdated. Weekly Standard, if you go to it, it's kind of, to do a little callback, it's like rain over me. Except the traumatic memory they're blocking out isn't 9-11. That's actually like their family. They want to remember that. (laughs) But the traumatic memory is like 2006 and the downfall of Bush. And every time you're like, but your entire party lost to like just a bumbling reality TV dumbass who eats fries. What are you talking about? Shut the fuck up. And Alex, if if you remind them that like, Paul Wolfowitz was drummed out of public life in shame for getting too horny. They will try to commit suicide, like by cop, like Charlie Feynman. <laughs> I I had I was in Rumsfeld's office. He was so good. He, he wasn't like all the defense secretaries. They used the power drill. How it was supposed to be used. <laughs> And Alex, the one thing that I'm so glad you brought up about the Weekly Standard website is their horrific author caricatures. <laughs> okay, if you go there right now, under there's a little sidebar that says "Our Writers," and they have these sort of like cheeky, sort of almost like uh, like like uh, like news caricatures of Bill Crystal and Fred Barnes. That's and actually just a photograph. They Bill look Crystal. like fucking ghouls. Like, I know like, they're, they're supposed to be like these sort of pithy characterizations of them, but every one of these heads looks more horrific than the next. Look at that. Look at, look at Mark Hemingway. Okay, let me get there. <laughs> My man got no it's neck. Just a penis. Okay, now Mark, it's a Mark Hemingway. Penis. Mark Hemingway. Just a face on a penis. Oh, Mark Hemingway was the first uh, character that an artist had to draw from an aerial view. <laughs> <laughs> and now I know what the art, the episode art is going to be. Hell yeah, Look dude. at these. Oh my. Um, Matt Labash, he was in that. He was the guy in the Roger Stone documentary that, again, looked like he'd just been like sprayed down with like a, a light misting, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and had like this disgusting wet lock of hair just curled in front of his face yeah. the whole time. Yeah, well, do do you sleep in sous vide? <laughs> <laughs> The fuck? Cultured. Very good no, feeling. One thing I want to draw I your attention to, to is an article a little bit down the front page on the Weekly Standard that's about the Twitter account Dog Rates. <laughs> 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 what the, I was going to bring that up for the National Review. They've been covering that heavy. It's it, it's really the most important uh, the most important cleavage in co- in politics today. <laughs> is that uh, like uh, the stupidest account on Twitter is. Um, <laughs> It donated money to Planned Parenthood or something and then had to apologize for it because a bunch of uh, MAGA chuds yelled at it. They're going to do, do Weekly Standard National Review. They're going to collaborate. They're going to do pro-life fetus rates. <laughs> 1410, <laughs> this fetus has a heartbeat and, and can hear its mother's voice. Would not abort. <laughs> Excellent. Hold on, hold on. I just spotted something. Try to go to an article. Okay. And wait until... The, uh, the lock screen comes up that says your access to articles has expired. It says, unapologetically conservative. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even get that. What? It's just th- they misspelled it. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, I think the thing to remember about the, the Weekly Standard is, I think, as Felix accurately said, out of all of these websites, they have the highest body count by yeah. far. They should apologize. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, that's my hangover joke for the episode. That's the best thing I'm doing for today. <laughs> yeah. See you, folks. I mean, <laughs> that's if all there, I got in me. <laughs> if there was any justice in the world, instead of having, like, a Geocities website that fucking... Oh, my God. Yeah. Wait, what did I do? What did I do? I what? Oh, is it Geocities? Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> one because yeah, it's, it's geo. It's like geo hell. Oh, okay. Me? Remember those old websites on uh, Angelfury? <laughs> <laughs> I think Felix, I think, think I think that it's tripod. I think it's quite revealing that after you guys call it Bill Maher for saying ra- something racist, you make fun of an immigrant for maybe not pronouncing things perfectly. <laughs> You're at fucking the Bullwinkle cartoon when he picks up the goddamn like wooden box of dynamite and says, hmm, dinamite. <laughs> <laughs> Fragile. Well, <laughs> well, okay. But in a just world, it wouldn't be a GeoCities website that's backed up by billions of dollars in dark money from people who have uncles that were in Operation Paperclip. It would be a kite that's passed around in The Hague. <laughs> 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 oh, I can't, I can't wait to uh, read Bill Crystal's latest after I unravel it out of the uh, pill capsule I've had up my ass for the last week. <laughs> Just Oz with all neocons. <laughs> Out of BC is Mark Hemingway. <laughs> Wait, oh my God, Mark Hemingway could have that little hat on yeah. top of his giant baby Huey like head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul okay. Joseph Watson is like, he's the new alpha in the prison. <laughs> We, yeah. got, uh, we got two more to go, and they are doozies. This is where we get into the high, high goatee level here. Like the, the, it's been, <laughs> we've been ratcheting it up, each one. But now we go to one of my personal favorites, The Federalist. Woo! <laughs> and, Alex, like, the, the thing that I think you point out about The Federalist that's so interesting is that like, every one we've talked about so far is basically, like we've described, sort of a, a, halfway, a group home for sort of, as you described, <laughs> red-faced louts and uh, <laughs> country club closet cases. Yeah. What's interesting about The Federalist is it is like, their masthead is like overwhelmingly women in their 20s, and it is very much like geared towards sort of like young women, and like it's sort of like this very like, their, their, their obsessions are very like lifestyle and family focused. It's sort of like Teen Vogue, except they pay their writers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep that. Uh, no, but they're My very worried. My favorite thing about like, it is, is that you know, I mean, obviously it's not profitable. It's one of these uh, astroturf things where, you know, like the Heartland Institute or some fucking monstrous extraction industry is pumping money into that as part of their like broader propaganda campaign in favor of low taxes and regulation and allowing the earth to be cooked to death. Uh, But they just sort of accept, yeah, like the side effect of that is that we're going to fund a bunch of weirdos to put out their sexual uh, uh, perversions on the internet all the time. Like it's just a weird sub, it's just this weird uh, side effect of all of the propaganda money is that, Oh yeah. Uh, the Hemingways are going to talk about their special relationship again. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I'm at the Federalist website right now, and one of the headlines at the top of the masthead is, this robot priest heralds Christianity's death in Europe. Uh, a it's very a regular <laughs> article by a regular person. Very a, normal publication. But like, unlike all the other websites that are incredibly horny because they're they're weird pent up guys. These are all incredibly horny from like young Christian women. Yeah, yeah. these are like trad women. Uh and March they're of dimes. Federalist uh they 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 lord this over that how their newsroom is majority woman, even though it's incredibly reactionary. And the actual writers they hire are pretty dumb and I, I they're I, incredibly are they dumb. really attractive? There's, oh fuck, they're so hot. <laughs> There's yeah. this one person, I, I I I'm not gonna say her name because it's irrelevant, but she her beat is like uh, you know, I swipe right on everyone in DC, like that kind of shit. And she has some problem with her student loans. I just want to read this excerpt from an article she wrote. If I had done my homework, I would have learned that the interest rate for a federal loan at 4.3% would have been much lower than the 7.8% rate I'm stuck at now. At the time, I assumed a private loan must be a better deal because it didn't have the government (laughs) involved. Private means more competitive and less expensive, right? She also wrote this article. Oh, no. uh, Honey, honey, that's exactly what they don't want you to write. She also wrote this article in response to uh, someone who wrote for the New York Times saying, don't pay your... pay back your student loans, there should be a debt revolt. And she said, his solution, however, is not only wrong, but in extreme cases is used as a fundraising tactic for terrorists. Seriously, two men were recently caught trying to use student loans to pay for airline tickets to the Middle East where they plan to fight alongside terrorists. I'm not saying Stiegel is uh, advocating for terrorist activity, but I am saying popularizing student loan fraud certainly won't bring about the change he's hoping for. Yeah, he's two kinds of fraud. That, that's, 
They used the money that they got of our student loan, presumably if this story is true, to do terrorism. He was saying, don't pay back your student loan. How the fuck can terrorists use... Oh, Jesus Christ. He goes on, people like Siegel who intentionally make the decision not to replay the, repay their student loans are the worst. They are no better than criminals who take out student loans using stolen identities. Siegel deserves his own special circle of hell where he is forced to prepare tax forms day and night filled with, quote, self-disgust and lifelong unhappiness. That's perfect, though, because that's the whole federalist ethos in a nutshell. Everyone needs to be as much of a square dipshit as me. Yeah, follow the rules. Yeah. No, but Sorry he wouldn't do it. You, if he got condemned to hell, he would have the same attitude. This guy was cool. He would have the same attitude, which is the same one I had, which is like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Come okay. get it, motherfuckers. You write, uh, I was just, you write here, uh, the tendency of American women to lean slightly more liberal on social issues is not evident here. The Federalist is almost singularly paranoid about threats to the nuclear family and traditional values. What are those threats? Well, the marginal practice of identifying as a dog mom, for one, which is apparently causing the millennial generation to, quote, miss out on the real joys of parenthood. If that isn't scary enough, you can also fret about the dangers of junior high sex ed, fall oh, for a man. Bill Nye Photoshop hoax, or complain that the American girl dogs are virtue signaling. <laughs> <laughs> Follow these wonderful gals. Yeah. Like all these ladies, I hate to tell you, but keep an ass from between their knees. Yep. Right, in, unless unless they're at a party where, um, how shall I put this? Uh, well, the key to this. <laughs> yeah. is well, the that. key to the Federalist is that, <laughs> uh, uh, like, it, it's a door, and it's a door that swings mm. both open and closed. But yeah. you know, the the idea is like just use a key to open a door yeah. so that it swings. Yeah. yeah. Oftentimes, people, you know, DC, it kind of turns into a fishbowl. Right. You get me. <laughs> and you know that's all well and good, but the problem is sometimes. <laughs> fish stay in their schools and you have to you know you have to swap it up yeah to mm -hmm. move those fish around in the bowls <laughs> you know try walking in someone else's shoes try picking up someone else's keys and driving their car <laughs> <laughs> last but not least on this epic rundown of the conservative media is the last and best still the reigning king Still the number one entry in the Chapo reading series by far, and it's not even close. The oldest, the best, the National Review. <laughs> y'all know who it is. Y'all all y'all yeah. you already know who it is. It's the Rough Riders anthem, but Bathroom Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, of course, founded in 1955 by William F. Buckley. Uh, you write here, Buckley's life's work was to create a new, more noxious brand of American conservatism that wedded backwoods Christianity to robber baron economic policies. In Buckley's view, his magazine was part of an intellectual tradition dating back to John Locke and Edward Bur Edmund Burke. Unfortunately for him, no such tradition ever existed. In reality, the review is part of a tradition of white resentment and cultural philistinism dating back to John C. Calhoun and Ben Tillman. And that is uh, exactly right. I mean, like, the National Review styles himself as being, like, the intellectual masthead for the conservative movement. But, like, the intellectual in that phrase is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Because you brought up the Weekly Standard has uh, one article about the dog rates account. Currently on the National Review, there's two articles by the same author, a guy named Ian Tuttle, lamenting, <laughs> lamenting that politics has crept into, in his words, one of the best accounts on Twitter. <laughs> See, this is why I love the National Review, because they are bold and forthright in their opposition to minority grievance culture. Right, yeah. yeah they exactly. don't want a culture where everyone's complaining all the time about, oh, uh, systematic police brutality and economic exploitation. Meh, 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 meh. I mean, you've got to be a grown-up and complain about the uh, stupid dog Twitter account being liberal to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ian Turtle is there, Seymour. This is the only place you can see dog pictures on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, Once the liberals get to it, it's done. I, I like the idea of Seymour Hirsch working there, like Amber said. Uh, then I talked to my contacts in, uh, in, in the State Department, and they said <laughs> that uh, they said that uh, Modern Family was going to normalize trans behavior. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, like. The other interesting thing about the National Review right now is that like they were the ones who were like the the proud Never Trumpers. They put out their special, you know, the the special Never Trump issue, and they've been completely left behind by like the, how the conser the actual conservative movement as it actually yeah. exists. Well, yeah, I and mean, like so they, now they have to make a big show of being. 
against Trump, but not in any way that really matters or counts and like defends him on any, because like he's governing in a way that's entirely consistent with their worldview. He's just doing it in a way that says the loud part quiet and the quiet right. part loud. I mean, he's just, a, <laughs> he's just a neocon who like turns his oven on and breaks all the gas mains in his house and wakes up and he's still the same guy. He just <laughs> says stuff like Justin from Canada. Uh, I think you sum up the national review uh, perfectly here under the goatee qualities aggressively pseudo intellectual massive victim complex convinced of its own moral superiority despite being on the wrong side of every issue for nearly 70 years <laughs> yeah that's the that's the problem for running a conservative publication for that long is it you really have to shut it down and start a new one every 10 or so years or else you can't claim that uh, liberals are the real racist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't really work when when the, you have the uh, you have the archives going back that said you supported apartheid, you supported segregation, and you're basically against every single policy that would have been good for black people. Well, you said uh, National Review uh, in denouncing the civil rights movement, and I believe this was Buckley himself uh, denounced it under the guise of uh, the, the Southern whites were quote the advanced race. That so. has never been true. <laughs> <laughs> w- William Buckley watching the Dukes of Hazard. Ah, my intellectual peers. Um, you don't bring this up, but one also, uh, in addition to being a, uh, um, he 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 uh, he later disowned his support for segregation and Jim Crow, but then repeated all of the exact same arguments about South Africa. One of the, my other favorite William F. Buckley moments uh, that I that I brought up to Ross himself, Ross Douthat, uh, when he was lamenting that you know Roger Ailes signaled the death of a one era of conservative journalism and William Buckley signaled the other, and he said, "Let's hope that the next era is more like the former rather than the latter." And I was like, do you mean uh, when William Buckley uh, recommended that all HIV-positive gay men get a tattoo on their ass, uh, li- identifying them as such? My favorite part about that is I was like, well, why? And then I thought about it for a second, and I was like, oh, yeah, I get it. I, I could see why William Buckley would want that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Roger Ailes, you know, the big difference in those two eras of conservatism is Roger Ailes never invited uh, Ross to sail with him. That's true. <laughs> You know, it's weird. Like, listening to all this in a row, you would be forgiven if you came to the obviously mistaken conclusion that politics is really just a tribal spectacle of acquired grievances and not actually any kind of battle over ideas or policies to, you know, structure human life. But that's, of course, absurd. (laughs) Politics is not the question of who gets what. It's the question of what's on ABC primetime, <laughs> uh, you know, like, whether children are allowed to beat you at an NCAA boxing pool, uh, whether... Politics is w- downstream from at dog rates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Liberal grade inflation is, uh, is ruining dog rates. <laughs> whether you can Ten finally get it... for everyone, and I'm sick of it. <laughs> when you can finally get a Wolfenstein game where you can play from a different perspective for once. <laughs> <laughs> the real shit about politics. Al- uh, Alex, I'm curious about the emissions on your article. Why not Washington Free Beacon? Washington Free Beacon. I forgot about that. I remembered it at the last <laughs> Was it, is it, is, Isn't that the one that, um, that they, they had to give away for free and they actually got sued? No. Well, it's, it's Bill Crystal's son-in-law's mag- <laughs> o- online magazine. It was, like a, it was like a dowry. And... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they're they known for... There was a really horrible Mother Jones article written about them a couple years ago by... Well, let's forget that. Uh, and it said that these guys are actually um, pretty okay. They do some gumshoe reporting, and I may not agree with them, but the magazine, I remember the quote was, it's actually pretty good. And you just need to look at their big scoops of the past couple years, like when they published, um, supposedly published photos of Russia invading Ukraine, and it turned out to be from the Georgian War of 2008. Yeah. Woo! Uh, and the other day when they uh, when they just didn't know how to do a public records request yeah. and said that Rob Quist never... Um, yeah, never, you know, like, never signed up for the draft. Yeah. So Which they're real. The stupidest they're, thing. they're real gumshoe reporters. But Alex, you can be forgiven for forgetting them because they are completely irrelevant. Oh my Everyone god! Oh them. my god! Hold on a second. I just went to the Free Beacon website. Matt, are you ready for this? This is by Sunny Bunch. This headline is Sunny Re- Lunch. Oh, Sun- Sunny, by Bunch. Sunny Lunch. Uh, are you ready for this, Matt? Just like yeah. I, just like 
put something in your mouth that so you won't bite your tongue off. <laughs> put your wallet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, get rid of this. Ridley Scott's versatility is his greatest strength. <laughs> <laughs> triggered. <laughs> that oh, fucking, I am fucking shit. triggered by that. Of oh, fucking course. <laughs> you know, he makes a bunch of garbage, but they're from different genres. <laughs> the worst director alive. It's Ridley. like that's like go, when you go to one of those like diners where they have the book thick menu and they got 500 different things and it all tastes like shit. <laughs> yep. You don't give them credit for variety. Oh, and the, uh, the my other favorite thing from the that I remember from the Free Beacon recently was uh, editor in chief uh, Matthew Continetti, who is the Bill Crystal son in law, the Crystal Boy. Um, uh, when when it came out that Trump liked uh, has all his steaks well done and with ketchup, uh, Matthew made a point of going to a DC steakhouse and ordering a well done steak and asking for ketchup and eating it and took photos of himself with a shit eating grin eating it and he was like I thought it was delicious. That rivals the art we could use for this episode. The Ooh. photo of him. That's, oh, God, yeah. That may be worse than the caricature of um, I, I don't Fred know. Not, not, since, not since the Legion of Proud Boys went and put themselves face down in toilets and dumpsters. Uh, someone owned themselves that hard. The so next. No, no one fucking. I mean, it's. It, it genuinely is like psychosis. When you're doing something unpleasant on purpose because you imagine someone else who you don't like will be mad at you for doing it. Libs are so triggered because I haven't shat for three weeks. <laughs> it, it does remind me of when I worked in daycare and kids would literally throw tantrums by shitting their pants. <laughs> uh, hey, Libs, I put a straw into my septic tank, blowing bubbles and sucking it back in. <laughs> What do you think about that? <laughs> Triggered much. Uh, sorry, I just God, this is this is this is addictive here. I'm, now I'm looking at Sonny Bunch's review of Wonder Woman, the subhead of which is the DC EU, which I guess means the DC cinematic universe, strikes back with the best comic book movie in years. This, he, is Sonny Bunch their comic book correspondent? Yeah, I think so. And he says, after a rough patch in theaters for DC, a stretch that included the abominably stupid Suicide Squad and the unfortunately balderized Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, the director's cut of which is far superior. Ah, <laughs> oh my God. Close it, Will. All right. Yeah, close All right. it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Come on. I got to go die. All right. One thing I appreciate about the, uh, the anime Nazis is that they uh, at least pretend on the most superficial level to appreciate uh, so-called Western culture. <laughs> they at least put the pictures of statues on there. They don't just go full on and only watch DC comic book movies. <laughs> they, like every single other political retard. <laughs> the, the, the Hidden Virtues of Beast Wars <laughs> by Sonny Bunch, who makes $700,000 a year. That, that you have some appreciation for culture. I, I like, uh, just to close it out, who would have thought that the consequence of John D. Rockefeller acquiring railroads and drilling holes in the ground would be that an orb-shaped redhead would get paid six figures to write about how he went to a comic book movie and related to Superman? <laughs> it starts with trains and it ends with train emojis. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the perfect place to close it out. Alex... Thanks so much Thank for you. joining you, us Alex. and taking Thanks, on Alex. us. Being Thanks for having me on. Yeah, this tour through hell. Woo. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.